wonder if George Lynch repeated his message to his Tar Heels. Same message he gave them on Saturday when they broke huddle. Lynch said to his teammates when they took the floor, let's win this for Coach Smith. And Jim, those two guys matched up in the center. I'm going to make a prediction. Whatever one plays the most minutes tonight, their team will win the game. That's Weber Montross. Weber said, I don't want the silver ring they gave us last year. I want the gold that says number one. And the team in gold, Michigan, has it first in the championship game. Straight man to man. Matchups as we expected. Montross and Weber down inside. And there go those double team traps for North Carolina. Weber, three pointer. Short, but online, but short. And it's Lynch with the rebound. Not surprising. He's led the Tar Heels in rebounding three straight years. And a little change for Michigan. They're going to put Juwan Howard down there on Eric Montross and get the double team from the backside from Weber. And Weber blocks it. Jackson blocks it the next time off of Reese. And Phelps touched it last. Two blocks, one by Weber and one by Jackson. Now, Jim, there's the strategy. And what, what Eric Montross ha has to realize here, Juwan Howard will play him straight up. Chris Weber is going to shield him coming over to trap and double team him down in low. The pass will be available to whoever Weber's guarding. That's George Lynch. Michigan let Jimmy King bring it into the front court. Jalen Rose now driving on Williams. Lynch with his second rebound. There's North Carolina typically as they do allow you to drive that baseline to get weak side help. Phelps off the glass for the game's first two. Phelps had an excellent game against Michigan in Hawaii at 15 points. He doesn't need to score big for them to win, but he has to keep his man honest. Brian Reese said he could be our MVP and not even score a point. That's how valuable Derek Phelps is to our team. Montrose staying in front of Weber. He'll be looking for the lob. Howard in oh, position, block. blocked by Lynch from behind. He has two rebounds and a block on three Michigan trips. That was just a smart play. George Lynch timed it perfectly. At the other end, Montross follows and scores, and he'll shoot one. Jim, one of the things that's happening right now for Michigan, they're not playing their own man solidly. They're counting on help from a guy from the weak side to come over for the block. And consequently, as I said, if Weber goes over to help on somebody else's man, his man will be wide open. Jimmy King fouled him. Montrose, such a perfectionist. That's what Dean Smith was talking about to us after the Friday practice. And, you know, he had 23 points as we see Eric Riley, the seven footer, come in for Michigan, replacing Chris Weber. Montrose, such a perfectionist. He had 23 points Saturday against Kansas. But said, I missed five shots, so I'm not happy. Now look at the top of the screen and watch. They turn off the giant screen here in the Superdome while they shoot free throws. They didn't do that in 82 and 87. It comes back on during, well, during game action. And in 82 and 87, the free throw percentages, Billy, looking it up, were in the 60s. Here's Saturday in the mid-70s. Well, without question, not only is it light, Jim, but it's moving light, and that's what would really affect the shooter. So far, North Carolina really playing up tight in the ball, making the passing very difficult to see an open man inside. Nothing if you go baseline. Charging on Ray Jackson. Again, it's George Lynch at the defensive end for North Carolina. Jim, I, re I think the reason, and we'll see again, as I said, North Carolina forces you to go baseline. They count on the end line being another defender for you and always get that weak side help. I think the reason Chris Weber was taken out of the game so so quickly, I think he's hyper so, so much that he's losing sight of what his assignment is. Steve Fisher wants him just to sit for a minute. Williams, long rebound to Jackson. King ahead. Nice lead. King will go against Williams. He's fouled on the way up. I think in the act of shooting, in fact. So two free throws for Jimmy King. And Jim, another thing you have to think about in a championship game with only one day rest, which team had the most taken out of them in the previous game? Sometimes you can play so hard, and we know what the answer to that is right. in terms of what Kentucky did to extend this Michigan team. So far, Michigan a little slow getting started. King for Michigan's first point. And I think back uh, to your alma mater. Jim Houston against Louisville but I thought was the most physical maybe the greatest uh, semifinal game as far as athleticism I've ever seen and it
Wright took an awful lot out of that Houston club. Here's Weber right back. They settled him down. And see if he doesn't change his philosophy defensively now, play a little more solid on his man. Nice move by Steve Fisher early. Just want to get Chris Weber's head on straight. Almost five. He got five. Nice defense by Jimmy King. Talk about the defense, Billy. Jimmy King played on Saturday against Travis Ford in Kentucky. Well, the thing that was so amazing is that you could see Travis Ford early on in that first half. He only got off two shots, and early on, he was just totally frustrated because King shattered him so well. And here you can see Lynch making the pass to the post so tough. Jalen Rose gives it up last minute. Weber underneath for the first field goal for the Wolverines. And he looks down Eric Montrost as if to say that's the first of many. Montrost tries to ignore him, but he certainly got the effect. Can't let him get that open inside. Both are great finishers in a low post. Two great defensive clubs here. Reese, Weber was on him, back to Montross. And a foul called against Ray Jackson. Jimmy, see Chris Weber down inside. Now, he had a great game, of course, against the University of Kentucky, but he did likewise against North Carolina the first time. 35 minutes played, he was 10 for 17. He had 27 points, eight rebounds, five blocks, just a monster game. And that is the second foul against Ray Jackson. Angry because he knows he must sit now. Rob Palinka replaces him. Rob Palinka, the senior from Lake Bluff, Illinois, a member of the 89 championship team for Michigan. The only member, huh? The only active member. Riley and Bosco were redshirted that year. Correct. They got to make the trip with the team to the White House and meet the president. Similar but to Rex Walters from Kansas the other day. Got a chance to work out with a team, but not an official member. Yeah, 91. Yeah. yeah. Paid his own way and had to pay his own way. Right. Now look for a trap on this dribble. Here it comes, all the way across the court by Williams. Oh, he threw it away over the head of King. Now, Jeff, uh, absolutely cardinal rule when you play North Carolina. When you cross half court, you must keep your dribble alive. By not keeping the dribble alive, it invites the trap. No place for Rose to go because he couldn't penetrate. Trouble. Montrose blocked by Weber, his second of the night. Into the hands of Reese and a blocking foul called on Weber. Great effort by Weber, but he just couldn't get there in time. He has really settled down now, playing solid defense. Look at how well he times that jump against the seven-footer. That's the first on Weber and the fourth team foul against Michigan. Carolina inbounds underneath. And Jim, North Carolina is incredible how they can get the foul line. To Lynch. Back screen for George Lynch. Jawan Howard looks around and says, somebody talk to me. And he's still talking to Rob Polinka. Now see, that time Jalen kept his dribble alive. 9-4 North Carolina. Rose, too strong off the glass. Montross secures. The difference is that Jalen got those off against Kentucky, those running one-handers. It's not happening against the size of North Carolina. Carolina turns it over. A whistle under 16 minutes. And look one more time at the lob to Lynch. Carolina has held Michigan to only one field goal in the early going. Eric Montross has five, Billy, and the Tar Heels controlling the rebounding right now. Well, they really are. Eight rebounds to two. They out-rebounded Michigan in the first game. And so far in the NCAA tournament, Jim, they have out-rebounded their opponents by ten a game. But they haven't played an opponent that can get on the boards like Michigan. Michigan a little slow coming out, though, Jim. Not, not the same foot speed and intensity they had against Kentucky. But it's so early. Michigan picks their offense up higher now. A 1-4 set. They're looking for a back screen and a lob out of this. Palinka, three-pointer. Got it. They didn't make one against Kentucky. That's their first of this final four. Rob Palinka. Well, that wipes out one of our four keys to the game. They've got to make a three. So one of those is, is now done. 
Lynch fires at the Phelps. Nice cross court. Good help by Weber. Lynch on the baseline. Oh, good block out by Jimmy King. Montrose couldn't get to the ball. Four on two. Weber back to King. Over to Rose. Palinka sets up for another three. Good. Two in a row. Rob Palinka, and that's why Steve Fisher says he's become our top perimeter sub. Jim, that's why Steve Fisher is 17 and 2 in the NCAA tournament. I mean, he pulled the trigger quickly to get Palinka in there, set him up for some shots. And Michigan has the lead. Sullivan thought about it. Williams will take it. Good follow through, but nothing there. Five men down in the lane for Michigan, and they still can't get the rebound. Rebound to Jimmy King. 10-9, Michigan. Those threes changed the tenor of the game. You can see a little worried look on a North Carolina player's face. Jalen Rose! Three in a row! Nine straight points on threes. That'll turn it around. You don't have to get rebounds. You make those. Montrose down low. There's a triple team on him. Hook too strong. King with the rebound. Polinka. Good passing. Howard with a two. Weber kicks it back out. He's so unselfish when he gets the ball inside. Excellent passer. The last three trips, nine points. Weber driving. No contact or no, no foul on the contact. And score the bucket for Chris Weber. North Carolina totally out of sync right now. See if they get back to their offense. Donald Williams has not gotten on track. There's a switch by Rose. Leaves Williams open. Williams to Montrose. Missed the dunk. Oh, no, it falls in anyway. Breaks the 11-point uh, run by the Wolverines. That was really a breakdown by Michigan, Jim, because Rose didn't aggressively make the switch, so that allowed Williams just to have a head start. Palenka. Good fake. Puts it up. Too strong. Weber. That's going to count. Dragged to the floor. That was George Lynch, one of the strongest forwards in college basketball, who had Weber right around the shoulder. And Weber was so strong, he was able to take it right up. And now, Jalen and he are really going to have That's called the lecture. You can watch it right here. I thought that Palinka got fouled, but watch the strength that Weber has being pulled to the floor and still softly put it up on the board. There was the contact inside. Weber. There's Lynch pulling him down, and he still put it up. Weber gets two for the basket. Does Lynch get two for the takedown? <laughs> well, well called. This is a tremendous run by Michigan, doing it on the offensive end of the floor. And that, that, what? I thought Howard was going to get a cheap one. And now Steve Fisher, another very crafty move, realizing he doesn't want Chris Weber in any foul trouble, brings Riley in there with a the lead. Up seven, he'll rest his big guy for a while. Weber goes out with seven points, 14 to two run in the last three minutes for Michigan. And Jim, keep up with that. Who plays the most time? See, the other thing Steve Fisher got out of this is Eric Montrose needed a rest. I think he feels that Riley can beat Salvador. Oh, the whistle takes away the fast break for the Wolverines. They call a reach in on Jimmy King. And that's his second, two on King, two on Jackson. In that matchup, Riley and Salvador. In the first game, Riley played 17 minutes, had seven points, four rebounds, two blocks. Salvador played 10 minutes, didn't score, didn't get a rebound, and had five fouls. So Steve Fisher has to feel comfortable that he can get the better of this matchup while Montrose and Weber are out. Henrik Rodel in for North Carolina. Number five out of bounds off Michigan. I haven't seen North Carolina this confused on the offensive end of the floor in a while. Those three-point shots took away a lot of concentration. Reese driving on Rose. Great penetrating move. Made all East Regional. Good Reese. That's a, that's a foul. Yes, score the basket. The Salvadori's problem against a Michigan, as opposed to, let's say, a Rhode Island, where he was very effective off the bench, is the Michigan players have his size, but they have so much more strength. Normally, when he comes in off the bench, he's playing against maybe a 6'7 player, and at seven feet, he can get by with But watch here. He doesn't even phase Juwan Howard. He puts his hand in, and Howard's just too strong for him. 
Steve Fisher going with the seniors, huh? Look at this. Indeed. Tally coming in. Michael Tally coming in, but you see the senior for Carolina first, Lynch returning. Lynch for Sullivan and Tally for King. Michael Tally for Jimmy King. Tally was the second leading scorer on this team the year before the Fab Five arrived, and two time Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. And a three point play for Jawan Howard. Michigan shot very well, and it probably was the real difference in addition to Mashburn fouling out in the Kentucky game. Michigan did very well from the free throw line, a team that normally only shoots at 50, 65 percent. Three seniors from Michigan on the floor. Reese drives by Rose. Second time he's beaten his man. Riley with the rebound, snaps it over to Rose. Good pass. Oh, great Rodel steal. Reddit. Rodel read it over to Phelps. Tried to bounce it back. Riley read it. Michigan's got the numbers three on one. Howard will challenge Salvadori. And that's a 10 point lead for Michigan. I think that North Carolina, Dean Smith is pushing up, but I think they need a timeout badly. Now, probably counting on a TV timeout, but really this team totally out of sync. Next whistle, there will be yep. a television timeout. And he tries to save them. It's been Get, moved. Getting nothing inside. Here's Salvadori. Salvador. There's the whistle. Now Salvadori makes the second free throw. Carolina will get its timeout. Television timeout, that is. And Salvadori coming up with a big offensive rebound here, Billy. Very good, but he can't finish it off on the inside. So many bodies, and you can see that strength. Weber in for Jawan Howard. And Montross will be coming right back in to counter that for Salvadori. Salvadori, who arrived at North Carolina as a 6'10", 205-pound freshman. Remember him talking to us about eating six meals a day, grocery bill costing $350 a month. And still couldn't put the weight on. There's so many of us in America like to know his formula for keeping it off. Two free throws cuts the deficit to eight, but Michigan leads it 23-15. Well, field goal percentages tell the story, and North Carolina, outside of the lane, only one out of 11 from the floor. And Jim, we talked about North Carolina shooting over 52 percent in the tournament. Something would have to give. Michigan was holding its opponents down to 38 percent, and so far, North Carolina out of sync. They go to the zone for the first time. Two-three zone. Montrose in the middle. Lynch will run the baseline out of it, so it moves sometimes into a one-three-one look. Stolen right out of the hands of Riley. Stolen by Lynch. They're high low, not as effective with Riley in there as Howard because Howard has those strong hands. Lynch left wide open. North Carolina has brought in number 24, Dante Calabria. Looks like both coaches trying to rest as many guys as they can early to have it ready for the second half. First time they played, Michigan led at halftime. You know, Billy, as many Michigan games as we've called the last two years, we've never seen the three seniors on the floor right now on the floor for this duration. No, as particularly not in the first half of the game. They didn't even play this much in the first half of the game uh, in, in Hawaii early in the year. Weber got it to go, plus a foul. How about threading that needle for Jalen Rose? Against the zone, and I thought Jawan Howard made a very good point today when he talked about Carolina's zone, and they said if they go zone, we will have to get the ball inside. Counter to what a lot of people say, if you have a go against the zone, you've got to be a perimeter team. But they think inside first. Second on Lynch. Jawan Howard back in for Michigan. Weber in his matchup with Mashburn the other day, they were talking a great deal during the game, and uh, Chris talked about that uh, as far as what the dialogue was, and he said, I kept talking to Mashburn about when he comes into town next year when he's playing in the NBA and he's playing the Pistons will he get me some tickets <laughs> which of course gives you the indication that maybe he'll be back next sounds, year. Sounds like a hint. It's not his best looking free throw either was no, it? No it wasn't but he's not a good free throw shooter. Montrose there he goes with a left hand shot. Weber doing a great job forcing him to step out. Howard's pass picked off by Phelps. He'll challenge oh, Howard. And they say that Howard pushed him with the body. Well, what North Carolina is doing is certainly getting to the foul line an awful lot, but that's not unusual for them. They have made 249 more free throws than their opponents and shot 324 more than their opponents. 
Salvadori returns for Montross. That was the second on Howard. So two on Howard, Jackson, and King on the Michigan side. Two on Lynch for North Carolina. Real chess match in regard to the big guys. Uh, Montross having the better of it so far, and it's the second time Dean Smith has, I mean, Weber having the best of it, second time that Montross has been taken out. Phelps said when uh, he was a freshman and they went to the 91 Final Four, he was all excited, it was fun and games, but it's been all business this week. Salvadori Good goes down on the offensive board. A pump fake by Reese. Good hit inside. Spots Lynch. And we talked about the blue collar guy. 1,500 points. His career, he just tremendous. Second leading rebounder all time for North Carolina. Palenka. Oh, we finally missed one, Billy. Made his first two. Looked good, though, didn't it? Right on the mark. Another good rebound by Salvadori. Both ends of the floor. Lynch doubled up. Had to just throw it toward the basket. Palenka underneath for Michigan. Jim, I've said a lot of times, but I think Steve Fisher is teaching the double down from the weak side better than anybody in the United States in the college level. Paid off again for him. Man to man now. Phelps is stuck. Now Williams is stuck with Howard. Surprised they don't get him down low somehow. Bad matchup. There he is in a good steal. Tally's pass picked off trying to go inside to Howard. Phelps over to Reese. Beautiful nice cutting try. move. That's Weber on a touch foul. And that's Weber's second. Touch foul. Great move on the inside that time by Reese. George, George Lynch lifted up his hand, the, sig the tired signal. Well, watch this great cutover move, a bouncing up, and Weber just touched him. You know, I, I said early, maybe Kentucky took a lot out of Michigan. That's the way it looked the first few minutes, but you know, now North Carolina is substituting very liberally. Both teams, King for Tally. And Lynch resting for North Carolina. Jim, the, Ryan Reese with two. The great traditions of these two schools, it's hard to believe they've only played four times. And we think back of one of those wins. Michigan's won the last two, but the one they won before the Rainbow Classic in the Southeast Regional, which propelled them on to the Final Four where they won their championship. North Carolina had won the first two meetings. That was in the regional semifinals. That's right. when Steve was the interim coach. And he told me yesterday that was his most important win. He said, once I got that one, that put me over the hump. It was right. uncertain whether he would get the full-time call. Well, it was funny to hear him introduced in his fourth season. And here he's been <laughs> to the Final Four over that five-year period. But I guess they say that first year he didn't coach a full season, which he didn't. Just coached six games. Yeah, six games. Six, and oh. <laughs> six pretty good ones and big ones. By the way, he said his second most important win was the first one against... Xavier in the first round, it was a struggle. He said, if I don't win that one, I don't get the job, for sure. Well, Pete Gillen gives a lot of people trouble in that first round. He's a guy that uh, certainly has done a fine job, and again, this year did. By the way, Fisher going for number 100 tonight. Trapping defense. Well, Weber gives too big a target for Williams down inside. Weber just eating him up there. Two players tipped it. Sullivan clears it for Carolina. Carolina has cut a 10-point lead down to three. Williams can tie it. He does. Jim, what really set that up is the Michigan backcourt players, Rose and King, drifted back towards half court instead of getting to the foul line for that long rebound. Rose. Sullivan called on the foul. There's not a player in college basketball that could have made that catch better than Weber, I mean, as well as Weber. Just incredible hands. They call them hands. That was such a I, bullet. I don't, I don't know how he never I don't even know how he picked it off. Bobbled it. Not a bit. Carolina on a 7-0 run. The tied at 25. Piloting the Goodyear blimp is Dr. Jim Maloney from Vienna, Virginia. I guess next year he'll be flying over Charlotte. That's the side of the 94 Final Four. Looking ahead two years, Seattle. In this building, he might have he might have had his first indoor basketball game. You could almost get that blimp in here, huh? It is so immense in here. Yeah. It has such a different feel than Minneapolis and Indianapolis, the last two sites. Back to the zone is North Carolina. Weber wanting him to reverse the ball and then lob to him inside. But Salvadori and Montrose, pretty big targets. Backing it down, giving the three. King. Oh, boy. 
Michigan doing a job with threes. Didn't make one against Kentucky. What's that, their fourth? That's their fourth. The city of New Orleans is accustomed to seeing three pointers drilled in the Superdome, but they usually come from Morton Anderson. Well, you know, Jim, you think back, Steve Alford didn't do bad with the three pointers the last time he was in here. Seven out of 10. That's right. Was the record before Williams uh, hit five out of seven, as did Rex Wallers, the percentage of three point shots made. Sullivan. Sullivan. Did not hesitate on that one. Drains his first shot. Well, that's the shot Rick Patino doesn't like, just inside the three point line. North Carolina really picking it up now. Weber. As baseline stuck. Oh, offensive foul and not called that time. Weber got by with one. From the other side, King. Weber. Great hands yeah. again by Weber. It's almost like he's got a magnum in there. That was good help by Sullivan. For Sullivan, the yeah. Tipped it back out. Two excellent defensive teams. The best in college basketball this year. Five count. Now, each team has been able to challenge for a five count in this half. Jim on the year Michigan holding their opponents to 41 percent shooting North Carolina holding their opponents to 41 percent shooting. They played great schedules and outstanding competition. And I, I really do think they play the best all around defense of anybody and that's probably the reason that they're here. North Carolina with four starters plus Henrik Rodel on the floor. Riley Montross. I think Montross can score on Riley down low. But look at Weber's not guard and Lynch. He has to keep him occupied. He's keeping an eye on yeah. that Riley Montross exactly. matchup. That one's short. Long rebound. Oh, Weber didn't box out. And Lynch took right. advantage. See, but what Chris Weber's trying to do is guard two people. He's trying to help out on Montross almost as his primary responsibility. Lynch too good a player to do that to. Carolina has regained the lead, 29-28. Dean gives it up. Three men around Weber. Oh, Lynch, another great rebound. Rodel from the reverse side. Again, how many times have we seen it? Rodel, the German Olympian, used that rim to shield the defender. The only Olympian on the floor tonight, although two players helped train the U.S. Olympians, and here's a steal by Lynch. I think he'll take it against Weber. Awkward shot, rebound to King, and Phelps picks his pocket. Some nifty ball handling, giving it up to Rodel. In this sequence, all you needed was Montrose to throw up a three from there. North Carolina really out there to draw some fouls. Michigan basketball. Jawan Howard will come in for Riley. That was a frenetic sequence of events right there. But maybe Montross would have been better off taking the three at the top of the key. North Carolina on a 13 to 3 run. Rose quiets Carolina for the moment. 31-30 Tar Heels. Jim Jalen, one of the few guards in the country because of his size, capable of going on that baseline. Nice touch by Weber. Two more subs for Dean Smith's Tar Heels. Salvadori Williams back in. It is inside, and it did. A great call by the official. We got a hard one to see. You can see from the angle he had there, it went right off Weber's. About his rib cage. So the two seven footers in for North Carolina, Salvadori and Montross. They have another one on the bench in Matt Winstrom. Three two point blocks. by Williams. Yep. And he was well short. Montross ran him over. Eric couldn't get out of the way. And in that particular case, Williams realizing that Jalen Rhodes is the kind of guy that'll turn his head, worked himself free for the three, but was a little bit out of his range. First on Montross, sixth team foul. Big double zero. The first to ever wear that number at North Carolina, although Dean Smith wore that number in high school. Smith, I got a kick out of hearing Dean talk about the difference from 
the 93 championship game versus when he played in 52 for Kansas when they won the title. He said they only got two tickets to the game and he couldn't find anybody to give them away to. <laughs> now you just can't get your hands on enough. 64,000 on hand here at the Superdome this evening. Good hands again. King got caught, saved by Weber. Montross with two hands taken away by King. There's the difference. Weber's hands were too strong. Montross got the steal. Rodos. Boy, North Carolina doing the job on the boards. Rose on the reach. Jim, something else you talk about 52, of course, Clyde the Vellet was a great star for Kansas. I mean, for Kansas at that time. The only guy ever to, to lead, lead, lead the scoring. nation in, in, in scoring and be, of course, he was the MVP of the Final Four that year. Took him to a championship. And to win a national championship That's the right. same season. And another funny thing happened. B.H. Bourne, the next year, Dean Smith played in the Final Four in 53. B.H. Bourne did not score in the 52 game. Ended up being the most valuable player of the 53, even though he's on a losing team. A lot of history. From the Indiana University won the next year by Indiana a single won, point. Right. Dean, by the way, in the 52 championship game, played 29 seconds although you might not find his name listed in the box scores he says I have the film at home to prove it to you I played 29 seconds which makes it unique he, he and Bobby Knight the only ones to play and coach in a chance that's right of all time Carolina by one Michigan coach Steve Fisher the son of a grade school coach in Heron Illinois his father, Howard, will be inducted in three weeks into the Illinois Basketball Hall of Fame. His father passed away this season, December the 16th. His father, a year ago, was the one who suggested it was time for his son to start all five freshmen. And this man was the fifth one to get the starting call, Ray Jackson. So Mr. Fisher always had a special interest in Ray Jackson. And the night he passed away in the hospital, Michigan played Iowa State, won the game. He was told about the victory, then asked, how did Ray play? And when informed he had his best game as a Wolverine, he said, I knew it. He then died. Those were his last words, Billy. Turnover against Michigan. Three ten to go in the first half. Look at Montross. The difference when he's down there with Riley as opposed to Weber, just pushing him out of the way. Great leaner by Williams. You know, I don't think that that's a good matchup for Steve Fisher when he puts Jalen Rose on Williams. He doesn't co concentrate enough, and Williams is using him a little bit. By taking him inside and then running around, Jaden likes to turn his head. That'll get him in trouble. So a big difference between Jimmy King and Ray Jackson, Garden Williams, and Jalen Rose. That foul was against Reese, his first, the seventh against North Carolina. So it's a one and one. What do you think of the pace of the first half, Billy? Uh, did you get a feeling that the coaches realize that uh, it might be a first half standoff and 20 minutes for the championship in the second? Well, Jim, I, I would agree completely. I think both guys are, are playing this first half. Get it over with. Try to be as close to even as possible. And the reason I say that, you can tell the substitution patterns are not anything like we've seen from these teams going down the stretch. I mean, we had, as you said, the three seniors on the game from Michigan early on. Montross in and out, Lynch in and out. An official's whistle. I wanted to just clear a, a, a sub, an earlier sub. So it's a one point North Carolina lead. There's Jalen Rose. He's got to concentrate on where Williams is. Doing a better job on this sequence, but I think North Carolina wants to lose it. There he is. Montross. There's that double down. Reese. He's going to try to get it up with that left hand. Oh, how about that? that? <laughs> he was, you knew he had his mindset. I'm stuck down in low, but I'm going to get it off, and he's laughing. Jalen Rose sees a player kind of mimic him for a while, not on purpose. I think he's just kind of surprised he got it off in there. Now they double up Rose. Finds an open Jackson. Riley 
great play. Makes valuable minutes off the bench for Eric Riley. Well, so far, both of those seven-foot subs, Jim, have done an excellent job. Montrose knocks Riley down and then goes to... And Ray Jackson really upset because he feels that Montrose got the ball because he knocked Riley to the floor. And that's number three on Ray Jackson. And Ray, who is such a competitor, went over there to try to help out. We'll see the play. Montrose goes down, boom, there oh. goes Riley down without question a foul. See, Riley doesn't get up, and Jackson saw the play all the way and goes over to try to stop the seven-footer and can't do it. There goes Riley down. Good job by Phelps to realize right away that Eric was open. And Ray Jackson, very big third foul on Ray Jackson in the first half. He has been a supreme player for this Michigan club. They would not be in this game without him, Jim. The bloodlines of Eric Montross go back to Michigan. John Townsend, his grandfather on his mother's side, an All-America in the 30s. They called him the Houdini of the Hardwood when he played at Michigan. And his father also, Montross's father, played at Michigan in the 60s. And now Matt Winstrom. So, yeah, he gets a little playing time in for Eric Montrose. The third seven-footer on this North Carolina team. They go into the 2-3 zone. And there you see Juwan Howard trying to make his presence felt on Winstrom. But I'll tell you, Winstrom, pretty good-sized body in there. Jim Bosco, 32 in the game. Rose, three-pointer rattled out, and Phelps got the rebound underneath. Polinka on Williams. I still think North Carolina now would like to get Williams some shots. And he's running around. You can see they're trying to, he's running the baseline. Polinka, as opposed to Rhodes, realizes responsibility staying right with him. If a guy will trail that close, though, you ought to be able to set a screen on him. There's the screen, and there's the shot. Three point shot. What a Perfect. pure shooter. That was Phelps who recognized what Michigan was doing. A brilliant play on his part. Freed up a teammate. Michigan, one second difference on the shot clock. Riley. Oh, Lindstrom on a great block. Howard knocks Sullivan to the ground. Dangerous pass. Now will Carolina pull it back for the last shot? Riley had it stripped away. Last touch by Michigan. And North Carolina will hold for the last shot, and I would say they'll take Williams to the top. Michigan should have at the other end, Billy. Yes. At the conclusion of this championship game, we will select the Chevrolet players of the game in conjunction with the award. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools. Montrose comes back in for the final 20 seconds of the first half, along with Reese. Jim, we'll see Donald Williams get this ball to the top of the key. And they'll look to free him on a drive. See if they get him down here. And he is the guy that put North Carolina ahead. So, hey, they use Reese instead. Phelps, three-point shot. Not what Dean Smith would have wanted. Not at all. Michigan's, Michigan got a chance. Yeah, still has time. Rose. Yep. Bosco slipped out of his hands on the way up. That was poor execution by both teams in that last 20 seconds. Weber did not play the last 3.42 of the first half. They saved them with the two fouls. Carolina's lead is its largest of the game. North Carolina 42, Michigan 36. Let's see if the legs come out a little quicker and also if the coaches stop substituting quickly here in the second half. Montrose with a soft oh, play. Oh, what a touch. You know, the numbers for the two guys inside almost identical in the first half, just the two minute difference in playing time, as you mentioned, but each had nine points, three rebounds in the opening half. And Weber answers at the other end. Jim, it, I think the stats are one thing, but the reason I think minutes are so important is because that sets the tempo as to how these teams play. They become such big factors in terms of the offensive defensive strategy. King leaning. And Weber is the guy. That was a brilliant play on his part. He realized that King was going to be covered by somebody in the weak side, and he sealed him by setting a screen to give Jimmy King the opening. Smart play. Great hands, great head. 
Reese, oh, good steal by Jackson. Jackson. With the three fouls, he stole it anyway. Rose. Oh, what a shot, huh? And the follow by Howard. Oh, a missed opportunity underneath. And who else but George Lynch battles for the rebound. There's that blue collar again. Michigan really missed a great opportunity there with a three-on-one situation. Oh, Montross, Reese on the follow. And again, if you're going to double down, everybody's got to help out. Weber can't guard two men. King spotted for the three. Reese really kept that alive after the King miss. By tipping it out. Carolina at the other end. See, there was that weak side help by Jackson, but Reese was so far out here, Jim, he wasn't in a position to take the shot on the pass back. Boy, they're really going down on Weber, aren't they? It's pretty obvious what they talked yes, about sir. at halftime. And they're going to make him work. 13 points for Montross. The other end, Lynch comes around, makes the steal. No. On the end line. Ray Jackson telegraphed that pass. Well, for Dean Smith, he makes the answer quickly. He's going to the bench early, and there is Lynch. Number two man in, in regard to steals on a given year behind Dudley Bradley, who he probably can't catch, but the number one man in steals all time for North Carolina. Rodel, Sullivan, Salvadori, Winstrom. Now, Steve Fisher has to look out there, Jim, and say, okay, Dean Smith is going early. How long can I let Weber stay out here and not get tired with Montrose coming back fresh? The only starter on the floor for North Carolina is Derek Phelps. And North Carolina in the zone, just trying to force Michigan maybe to take something outside to gain some valuable minutes of energy. Rose. Oh, nice shot. Seven points for Rose. Jalen, as we mentioned in the first game, had a big scoring game against North Carolina. And there was a case. Rose on a very foolish foul. He's, he, he didn't want to give the effort to move his feet and try to hold up Rodel with his arm. That's the second on Rose. Where does North Carolina turn for its points with this group on the floor? What they'll do is just constantly run their motion offense. They just try to make Michigan play a lot of defense. I think Mike Krzyzewski talked about each possession being something. He's going in, trying to draw a foul. Winstrom has it stripped by Weber. Rodel. A near steal. Rodel this year, Jim, probably in one of the great comebacks of the season in college basketball, was the man that got it started when Florida State had the great game at Chapel Hill. Rodel hitting outside shots. Turned it around for North Carolina. It came from 20 plus points down. 21. Back to the win, right? 21, 21 with down. nine minutes to go. Not only one of the greats of this season of all time. Yep. 21 with nine to go. Well, so Montrose comes back in. So does Donald Williams, as Phelps sits along with Winston. And you can see Steve Fisher's brain moving a little bit to say, "All right, if they're going to do this, I've got to go ahead and give Chris Weber a little bit of a break." Lynch saw the lob pass coming in and defended. The Louisiana Superdome championship night. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer courtside. North Carolina a moment ago had its largest lead of eight. And Michigan has cut it now to four. That time with North Carolina trying to trap out of their zone, everybody ex extended outward and that allowed Weber to be wide open. Donald Williams. His follow through in the last two games, of course, in this entire NCAA tournament, has been sensational. Averaging almost 19 a game in the tournament. Juan Howard over to King. Good adjustment in midair. And here you have Michigan going right down inside, answering what North Carolina wants to do. Montrose feeling that double team pressure, passing the ball out quickly. Sullivan. Right here. Come on. Oh, I, I think, think Weber's yeah, hurt. I, I, I think he got hit trying to reach in there with a shoulder right in the head. And of course, we know that he had his nose broken earlier this year by Riley in practice. Let's see what happens here. There it was. The hand came right in there. Chris is still down. 
A timeout under 16 minutes, the television timeout. We'll be right back. Family watching on, obviously very apprehensive. This guy is the ultimate competitor. He's not going to sit over there unless he's really hurt. He's been replaced at the moment by Eric Riley. A lot of pushing going on down in low. Williams, wow, he is so oh, sure. Right. There's a guy who was a fair shooter. Another man with a bald pate. Only man in the history of this tournament to be the MVP and play on three championship teams in his career. Never lost in the final four. The other end, Jackson. That's a two. Jim, something interesting. We talk about the great sophomore players, the five sophs now. Kareem played as a sophomore with four other sophomores on his team. It's a traveling call. Not only is Kareem here, but the middle of your screen, Isaiah. Isaiah Thomas had a pretty good final four, and he calls a timeout. Michigan gets it. Excellent job by North Carolina to double team. It doubled up Rose, and Howard had to burn a timeout. Carolina by five. in the right eye and the, the trainer Dennis Ralston put some solution in it he said how are you feeling Weber said fine he's back Tim all right Leslie back to the starting five in fact for Michigan Rose there's that lane. Lane. Yep. so tough it's on a, that shot oh, he is because it's 6 8 you just can't go to him he's got great body control slides through and is willing to go ahead and, and glide with that shot Got to pivot out there. There's oh Weber. What a God. steal. Foot race. Weber with Williams behind him. Forget it. And that should have been a technical foul. I do not understand that call, Jim. Guy hangs on the rim. He's not in any danger. It has not been called all year. It'll be the number one thing I think we'll see in force next year in college basketball. The refs have not done a good job with it at all. Another steal. Almost. North Carolina basketball. It's a great play by Weber. We talk about his great hands. Look at this. Boom. Gets the steal and off he goes, turns around, a big man who can put it on the floor. Maybe not as well as Mashburn, but pretty close. Now watch him hanging on the rim. Without question, that's a technical foul. Would have been a huge call. He had a technical foul in the first North Carolina game. That one had nothing to do with hanging on the rim, just a little talk. Carolina game was his high point game of the season until it was matched. I guess it still remains that way, but it was matched against Kentucky. 27 points in that victory. Montrose. Pretty nice job by Jackson, though. I don't think he picked up the foul, but Montrose had an easy put away there. Let's see who gets uh, whistled for this one. Well, Weber's calling off all, all of his players in Jackson. Did he get the foul? It's on Jackson. That's his fourth. Yep. Four Weber on, actually right. could have had one, but Ray Jackson prevented an easy two. We talked about this young man really being the guy that got Michigan going in the early rounds with. 38 points in his first two games. 19 in the first game was the first time he led the team in scoring all year. That was his career high, and then right. he matched it against UCLA. Uh, two shots for Montrose. By the way, Rob Kalinka, number three. There he is. He knocked down a couple of threes in the first half, and he replaces Ray Jackson. Montrose said, I don't settle for second place. He was talking about what a perfectionist that he is. North Carolina surprisingly got by with a little press and caused the timeout to be called by Michigan. I thought they'd go to it again on the main free throw. Weber reach in called called against Lynch. Yeah, Lynch coming over from the weak side just had too far to go though Jim. As Mike Krzyzewski pointed out on the Telestrator before the game, if you're going to help from the weak side or you're going to double down, if your spacing is too far away, you get there just in time, not for the steal, but to go ahead and commit the foul. And that's what happened on that play. And that's the third on Lynch. And I'm surprised Dean Smith isn't thinking about taking Lynch out. He certainly wants him in the, on the game down the wire with his experience. Michigan has made its last six shots. Good. This one blocked by Montross. 
Should have the numbers for Montrose. They can't get him the ball. Good hustle by Howard. Three-point shot by Rolo. Weber has position. Snaps it out to Rose. Neither team can get the run here in the second half like they did in the first half. And you think somebody will, don't you? North Carolina had an eight-point lead. It's been reduced to two. Weber. Oh, the second time tonight, he almost made the great play. And twice now. Down. Twice Howard has tried to follow up an easy one and missed a chipping. And George Lynch has got to come out. He's been hit in the abdomen. That's just a matter of losing your balance and yep. uh, desperation effort. And without question, North Carolina hit it out. This side, go. Game getting very physical down in low now. Lynch goes out with nine rebounds. Got hit right in the gut. The last touch by Carolina. Palenka looks like he wants the shot. You know, he's looking for openings. Two three zone. King short. Salvadori stuck but finds Rodel. Nice pass by Salvadori that time. Sullivan. Weber with the hands. Oh, just a vacuum cleaner in there. Whoop, that's my ball. Out of the way. North Carolina has not been able to convert for a while. Michigan, however, hadn't been able to take advantage of it. This is their third chance to tie or take the lead. Is that Montrose on that reach? Or Sullivan? Well, he's eyeing both of the players. I think it's going to be on Montrose. It is his second. That's one of the things that's tough when you take a big man out without question, hit him with his body. You take a big man out, he's got to move his feet on that double team. Very susceptible to picking up the foul. Donald Williams, who had 25 against Kansas, he's back in. Montrose with his second. Many times, Jim, you get a team down and then you go into a lull offensively and don't build on that lead. Gives a great deal of confidence to the other club. Some minutes here that Michigan has picked up. Some valuable points. Weber over Montrose. In and out. Montrose secures the rebound. Thought he got fouled. Belts. He knocked down his own player, Salvadori, and penetrates for the two. He loves that move. He uses his own player as a screener while he's dribbling. Weber knocks him to the floor. Score the basket. Good. Williams fell, but no foul. Good no call there. 17 for Weber. No advantage gained by the by the offensive player on that contact. Oh, there's a foul. And Weber's saying they're pushing me on the other end. You see Weber right here. You can see he gains no advantage on this play. Donald Williams just falls down when he met a little bit of contact. Good finish by Chris Weber. That foul was not on Weber. It was a called against Riley, his first. Ryan Reese back for the Tar Heels. Sullivan out. Jawan Howard. You know, Jim, both coaches wanting to have liberal substitution Listen patterns in this game, but what it has done, it's taken away the offensive flow of the game because they're playing with a lot of combinations that they're not used to in this kind of a game. So I think it's taken away the offensive flow and probably hurt a team for making this nice run in the second half. Two shots for Montrose. Pinch that one off. Wearing a haircut. Like the one his father wore when he played for Michigan back in the 60s. His father came up with the idea, let's make a bet. If you get a haircut, I'll do it too. And Eric said, I ended up being the first one in the chair. My father walked out of the barber shop. <laughs> Never followed up on the bet. And that was Scott you saw in the stands. North Carolina been sitting on this two-point lead for a while. Steve Fitcher calling out set play. Low post. King for the lead. Oh, Weber almost bumped into Phelps. Tipped it instead over to Palenka. 
And Michigan resets. Probably got by with one there. I Phelps, think so. You know, Phelps would have been better not trying to get the ball, just draw the foul on Weber. Oh, nice pass, but behind him. Good idea. Poor execution. Salvadori subs Montross. Jim, both teams very tight offensively. Now, you notice there's really no flow in the shot. But the guys that you'd like to be taking it right now, as an example, Donald Williams have not touched the ball. Jimmy King's on it pretty well. North Carolina's made only one field goal in the last five minutes, ten seconds. And that was the penetrating bucket by Phelps. Cross court passing now. Phelps had it stolen. Jimmy King. There'll be no stopping him. The game is tied. Soft slam by King. Great vertical leap. I thought for a second he might have left too early, yep. but I don't. I guess you don't have to worry about that with Jimmy King. He can. He can really sky. The game tied at 56. think that Reese is a guy, Jim, with Palinka on him who could score against Palinka down inside. He's got some size on him. They just can't get him the ball. Lynch, jumper. North Carolina back in front. A veteran. Salvadori slow getting down court. Allowed Weber to get in good position. Double team on Rose. So great to have big men that can pass like Juwan Howard. Weber, nifty move. Montrose getting a long rest here by Dean Smith. Action starting to perk up, 58-58. So Brian Reese is being used as a passer here. He can't get in position where he's an offensive scorer. Williams, one-hander, tough shot. Howard had it for a moment. Malika on the back makes the pass. <laughs> Lucky he was not out of bounds there. Seniors playing a solid game off the bench. There's that passing. Love to Weber in Michigan is in front, 60-58. There's the high-low that Steve Fisher has been calling for. They were eight down in this half, the Wolverines, 48-40 at the time, now 60-58. Lynch somehow got the pass to Phelps. Reese short. With Matras out of the game, North Carolina really not having their primary offensive threat. They're taking a lot of strange shots. Michigan looking very confident now. Palinka passes it up, gives it to Rose instead. Weber, easy rebound, but threw it up way too hard. Guys, not been able to push it up. That's the shot Williams loves. And he puts the Tar Heels ahead by one. Jim Williams has done the job down the stretch. Scored the last nine again, Arkansas. Two threes broke the back of Cincinnati. Huge of course, three against Kansas, and, too. Uh, yes. A monster in the semifinals. That high low against Steve Fisher wants. Nice defense. Howard. First, he makes the pass on the lob on that high low offense. Steve Fisher's got something he's real comfortable with, particularly with Montross on the sidelines. Timeout called by North Carolina. There was a television timeout coming on the next whistle, but a long stretch of hot shooting and fast action. And Michigan by one. Ebb, ebb and flow of this game interesting. Michigan had a 10-point lead at one point in the first half. Carolina eight in the second half. Eight overall lead changes. Weber with 21 points, nine rebounds. Fisher on the sidelines for Michigan. Jim, one of the things that Steve Fisher found, as did Rick Pitino the other day, he's found an offense that worked, and it worked, of course, with Montross out of the game. This thing may change now, and that was that high-low. Here you have Montross in, Weber out. Scott Cherry in for the first time, number 11 for North Carolina. 
Looks like Dean Smith wants to get a couple minutes out of these fellas to get ready to go to the four-minute mark and get all his starters back in there. James Bosco back in for Michigan, 32. So he only has one starter on the floor right now, does North Carolina, and that's Matras. Nothing doing in there with a the double team. Cherry. Five on the shot clock. Somebody's got to put it up. Rolo forces it. And a shot clock violation. See, this was a very calculated move, and I wonder why, in the case of North Carolina, they put all of their scores down with that timeout, Jim. You know, it's at one possession. They had nobody that was really looking for the shot. Now Phelps comes back in, Cherry down. Williams will come back in. Dean Smith tried to get one possession out of it, but I think one down, that was a, a calculated move that didn't, didn't work. And really, I don't think had the odds in its favor of working. Weber back in for Michigan. And Williams, we saw, also returning for the Tar Heels. 6.06 remaining. Second time today, North Carolina succeeded on coming back with their full court pressure. Kentucky caught Michigan a couple of times in this situation. As did GW, remember, in, the, in their comeback. It's one good safe thing. Howard to Weber on both ends of the floor. Just throw it up in the air in their high low. Let's see if they go back to it now. It's anywhere near Weber's hands. It sticks. Yeah, exactly. Why he's so much help on breaking the press. Plus, he makes excellent decisions after he catches the ball. Screen for Jimmy King. 12 on the shot clock. Rose. This could be a huge shot right here. Huge shot. That gives Michigan a four point lead. Jim, we're at the 524 mark. And of course, that bit major stat Michigan 30 and 0 when they lead at the five minute mark. Rose is three, a big one. I think that Dean Smith really needed to get those scoring starters back in the game and gut it out for that last five minutes. He had no scoring on the floor. Taking a lot of time here. Sullivan doesn't want the shot. Williams does, though. Yep. But we're under five. Michigan leads. They have not lost a game this year when they have the lead at the five-minute mark. Big steal. Some of them comes up with it. If, if, Phelps lost it. Oh, he mishandled it. If Phelps had not run into Salvador, he had a layup on the other end. Coming in, Ray Jackson with four fouls and also Lynch and Reese. Jim, now North Carolina is going to go the rest of the way with those starters out there. Likewise for Michigan. We've got what started and what we talked about at the beginning of the show. Maybe these coaches played the first 20 minutes just to get this point in the game. Everybody should be fresh. Yep, all 10 starters yep. in the game on the floor. Michigan going high low. King jumper. Huge shot. Two point basket. Two pointer. And their perimeter game was not much of a factor against Kentucky, but it really has opened up here. King's coming up big tonight. Yes, he is. He's, has 15, which is second high for the Wolverines behind Weber. Only had three against Kentucky, but remember what his job was. Shield Travis Ford the whole night. She did so well. Now he's got Donald Williams to handle. Williams. Oh, oh is that beautiful. They never even touched the rim. Brings Carolina within one. Williams has 21 on the game. Somebody's got to be open because that, that was Williams' man and he had no one. John Howard saves it. And Michigan will reset with 3.20 to go. King tipped out to Montreal. That was Lynch. They've got the break. Carolina can take the lead. Phelps up with it. And down oh, goes. Oh. Carolina leads by one. Wow, it hung there for what seemed like a full second. 
68-67. Jalen wanted to pass off the dribble to Weber. Good help down inside. King three-pointer short. Oh, man. Weber. Here's North Carolina breaking again. They've got Reese ahead. Phelps decides to pull it back. That's why Dean Smith was resting those guys. Jimmy he wanted them fresh down the wire. Phelps controlling. Reese says that Phelps is our coach Smith on the floor. Now, if you're Jimmy King, you cannot let Williams go, no matter what happens. And Dean Smith uses another timeout. That leaves North Carolina with one timeout remaining. They were down four just a moment ago, but now they've seized the lead by one. The Louisiana Superdome. Jim Nance and Billy Packer are inside. You know, Billy, November the 1st, almost 300 Division I basketball programs open practice for the season, dreaming of being here on this night. And it's come down to two teams and a little more than two minutes remaining. North Carolina leading by one. And Dean Smith went to the bench again. You have Williams, who's been his top scorer, and Reese on the bench. Montross on the blocks. Going inside, but it's tough to score in there with that double down help. Lynch and a tough shot. George Lynch's father, he loved it. That puts North Carolina up by three. And they go into this, a zone defense they haven't shown yet tonight. Lynch running the baseline, a 1-3-1. One, one. A little bit more pressure on the shooter in this defense. And obviously a lot of help down inside. Get it into Weber. There's that help. Four players around him. Oh and they call a foul on Sullivan. Now, Jim, one of the things, fouls have not been a problem for anybody, with one exception now, because neither team close to the shooting of uh, a free throw except on a shot. But what you can do now defensively if a man gets down in there tight is to foul him quickly because he's not going to the line. Now it's only the third team foul on North Carolina as they substitute Brian Reese or bring him in for Rodel. And Sullivan also out. What a gamble by Dean Smith to have his scores. He figured he'd get them back and get one defensive possession out of his defensive twosome. North Carolina has scored the game's last seven points. They stay in that zone defense. Lynch is the guy that calls all the moves underneath. Rose lost it. In a Williams. pack, Williams surrounded by three, and he, he breaks out of it. Smart play not to try to make them. There's a foul, but again, you can you can go for steals here because neither team close to shooting. That's only the fourth against the Michigan team in the second half. Number three for the game on Rose. So four on Michigan, three on Carolina. Nowhere really close to the one and one. And Michigan wants a timeout. 118 remaining. I'm out Michigan, Carolina has scored seven straight. North Carolina with possession and the lead, and they just had a very big defensive stand when they changed up defenses on, on Michigan, befuddled the Wolverine. It really did, and now what you see is that you'd say, well, who's in the game right now? Tally is in the game, Bosco's in the game, and the reason for that, and I'm kind of surprised that Juwan Howard committed the foul, is that what Steve Fisher is going to do now is to go ahead and try to make steals and come up with a foul. Okay. Trying to get North Carolina to turn the ball over with aggressive defense. Rodel in for Williams. Plus, they may have to get Carolina into a free throw shooting situation here in the last minute. Exactly. The trail. North Carolina semi delay. Now, Tally's, Tally's reaching all over. And one of the things you have to be very careful of here, Jim, if you're Michigan, is not to have the intentional. I mean, you go out and grab a guy without going for the ball, then you really got a problem. And that brings it up to now 16 fouls, so the next one will put him in the one-on-one, -on -one. so they take Tally and Bosco out. Right. That was the strategy. Now, Dean Smith is looking for Donald Williams to rub off here and get the ball down the sidelines. He tells his assistant coaches to sit down. <laughs> He's calm, they're not. And of course, one of them over there played in 1977, Final Four. Bill Ford. Bill Four, exactly. Played against Marquette, lost in that championship situation to Al McGuire's team. How about, how about Weber? Phelps, a guard, very good with the ball. Weber playing him one-on-one -on -one in the backcourt and gets a steal away from him, knocked away. A near, a near steal, but Carolina 
Now here's where you can't be too defensive with your passing either. You got to go look to score because they have everybody back. Lynch to Montrose got to take it. Is. You've got to look to score, Jim. What North Carolina did not do before that, they played defensively. Excellent play by North Carolina. Jackson firing up a three. He got it. Huge one. He got it. A huge three. Two? They call it a two now. My goodness. So it's a three-point difference. Wow, Billy, I thought it was a three. Well, Jim, we talk about the shot that Rick Pitino hates. Of course, you love for them to go in, but look at that. By a few inches, that became a two-point basket as opposed to a three. And how often do we ever sit and talk about foul problems can be a problem? In this particular case, it's because there are not enough fouls. In the case of Michigan, they have only, there's, North Carolina's only committed three fouls in this half, so they can play aggressive defense and, and keep Michigan from getting anything easy. Michigan. Again, I, oh, Reese had his foot on the line. Reese had his back foot on the line. Michigan forces the turnover. Jim, again, you play passively, bringing the ball in against the press. You've got to go long and look for a score if it's available. Michigan's got four guys playing up high, only one back. What a break for the Wolverines. They insert Palinka. Thinking knocks out. down a couple of threes in the first half. Well, I think the situation, you don't want to foul him when he's a three-point shooter, but North Carolina can afford some fouls here. And, and Jim, we got to be thinking this Michigan team, out of their last eight games, four of them went overtime. Do you think it could happen again? Mm. North Carolina involved in that triple overtime national championship back in 57. And of course, Michigan with an overtime championship against Seton Hall. Three to tie. Got it. Oh, it sure looked good. Weber underneath. One point game. North Carolina and by one. Weber, Michigan has no timeouts left. Sullivan pushed off, got by with it. There it is, go long. Rodel in the corner. 25 seconds remaining. Playing Palenka keep away. tried to call. He does, in fact, commit the foul on Sullivan. So Sullivan will go to the line with 20 seconds remaining. He's a 79% free throw shooter. He'll be in a one and one. Well, there was another young man that went to the line with 17 seconds to go a few years ago. Matt Doherty. Missed the front end of a one-on-one, -on -one, which set up a shot that Sleepy Floyd hit to put Georgetown ahead of North Carolina, which created the shot that Michael Jordan then hit to win it for North Carolina. So Sullivan finds himself in the same shape as Doherty. Williams comes back in. It's a one-on-one -one with 20 seconds left. Remember, Michigan won the first game this season by one on a last-second put back by Rose. Now, let's watch. Michigan will have to bring it. Oh, he walked. Up. He walked and the referee missed it. Weber brings it into the front court. They have no timeouts remaining. Oh, he causes he too many timeouts. That's a technical foul. He called a timeout. Michigan doesn't yes. have any. He got by with a walk, and Jimmy calls a technical. He, he calls a timeout. He doesn't realize that's Michigan's too many, and so it'll be a technical foul. North Carolina shooting and the ball. A huge mental mistake. Steve Fisher calls his team back. You know, at this, you hate to even harken back to 82, but there was a mistake, a mental mistake <laughs> at exactly. the very same point of the game between Georgetown and North Carolina in 1982. Absolutely correct. And everybody remembers Freddie Brown with the ball. Worthy really out of position on that particular play. Brown threw it to what he thought was a teammate out of the corner of his eye, and it was James Worthy. 
Weber thought they had a timeout in their pocket. They did not. Thus, it's a technical foul against the Wolverines. North Carolina will shoot two plus have possession. Correct. You'll see the walk, however. The referee had his back turn here. Doesn't, re doesn't see the play, but Weber walks on this one. Boom, boom, there's the walk. Now, here he calls the timeout because he realizes he's in trouble. It's down to 11 seconds. And you can see the exasperated look on the sidelines of the Michigan. Disbelief. Yep. And it'll be Donald Williams going into the line, Jim. The young man who's had the hot hand throughout this tournament for this team has been the real leader primarily with his great three-point shooting. Now has an opportunity to do it on the line. And if you're Michigan, not much you can do about it right here. You just have to hope that he doesn't make it. And of course, if you're North Carolina and you're George Lynch, you said we want to win one more for Coach Smith. And that's the position they're in. It is almost eerie how this is setting up to be such a similar scene to 1982, the other year that Dean Smith won a national championship. If he wins one tonight, that'll be 2-2 hey, two, two in the Superdome. Exactly, Jim. He is 5-0 and oh in this building. Coming in here, he's beaten Tulane twice, and then plus the win he had Saturday and the two wins to win the national crown. You know, they've named a dome after him already in North Carolina, yeah, the right. Dean Dome. Do you think there's any possibility that New Orleans may adopt him if Donald Williams is fortunate enough to hit these shots? Yeah, and, you know, it's it, it's really the Smith Center, so this should be the Dean Dome if maybe, he wins tonight. Maybe you call it the Smith Center when you don't live in North Carolina, <laughs> but when you live in North Carolina, you call it the Dean Dome. Not bad for a coach who had his first head coaching job in 1958 at Air Force as the golf coach. <laughs> he went out to play a round of golf with an assistant football coach named Pepper Rogers and was told by the AD, low man gets the head coaching job for the golf team. Smith won. And in addition to going to being a great coach, he's the man responsible for the 32 million that was raised for that Dean Dome. Now look, two point differential, and since they'll get possession and Michigan can't stop it, he makes two, this game will be over. And Jim, the other thing that's interesting, we talked about foul problems. It turned out not enough fouls with the problem for Michigan. Four point difference, North Carolina with 11 seconds to go and they have the basketball. There's a young man who's been a great shooter, but he, did, he opt not to come over for shooting practice on Saturday, rather had his meal. There's the offensive move. Got a foul. Him. But he said he'd rather eat his meal than come over and shoot. It certainly hasn't affected his play. Matter of fact, the young man is, uh, I guess, broke a record here for three-point shooting in the final four. Huh? He has made 10 out of 14 in the two games, Donald Williams. And how about Chris Weber? Well, what must be running through that young man's mind right now? Palinka in. Even if Michigan, if should Carolina miss free throws, if Michigan yep. score at the other end, they Carolina stop. doesn't even have exactly. to inbound it. The object is don't even touch the ball. Michigan cannot stop the game, and so the, basically the game is over. Ray Jackson has fouled out with six points, but what about Weber? Well, you know what he's thinking about. He's such a cerebral young man, has handled himself so well in the press conference. He's been absolutely fantastic with his knowledge of the game and the way he answers things, but maybe in the rush of the moment, Jim, going down there, trying to beat two men, realizing it was 11 seconds on the clock, he just blanked out in regard to the foul. Dean Smith, eight seconds away from a second national championship. The Fab Five comes up short again. There you have it. North Carolina is the 1993 national champion.